Hi, everybody. I hope you can see he, see me and hear me. Very clearly. Yeah, great. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. So this golden egg is about gender and it's specifically about the journey of integrating gender analysis in the CRP. We think that this journey itself was worth a golden egg. And this work, of course, has been done with the CADA, Worldfish, Kids, Yet, you know, a lot of other partners. So what I'll do, I don't have a fancy, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> one figure, but you know, I'll take you through the progress we have done in both research and the programming level in both phase one and phase two. Peter, do you mind? Thank you so much, yes. So phase one, uh, the general work that we did in the livestock and fish CRP was very much setting up our work. So in terms of the research, we somehow started from scratch. There was some evidence um, and some studies on gender analysis done, but not so many. We did, we did a lot of diagnostic ad hoc research work. We were asking questions such as, you know, how do, how, how do gender considerations fit into the research that other scientists are doing in livestock? Or, you know, what do, we, what do women and men do in livestock? What is the division of labor? Or maybe also some basic strategic questions. What does ownership yeah. mean? So it was mm. quite, um, quite ad hoc. Please mute yourself, sorry. <laughs> so we engaged with quite a lot of ad hoc uh, basic research questions. We also, of course, had to develop tools. So we had some diagnostic tools. We engendered some of the existing tools, such as, for example, GFIST. And we also developed the first Women's Empowerment in Livestock Index, the WELI. So here the focus was very much on women at production level, mostly integrated work and ad hoc work. At programmatic level, we had to really, you know, set up everything. So in terms of capacity building, we worked a lot with non-gender scientists and also partners, a lot with ICADA. And, and we were really trying to explore with them, you know, what does gender analysis mean in your research? But also, is this gender re research? And, you know, once you have gender data, what do you do with it now? How do you integrate it in a project? Or even discussions about whether qualitative uh, data was publishable. And then budgeting, important issues. At the beginning, we had some colleagues who, of course, wanted to do gender analysis, but you know, we didn't have a gender budget yet in the, in the project, or we didn't have a gender, the time of a gender scientist covered. So a lot of discussions. Many of you will remember the 10% gender tax, as it used to be called, which you know, it wasn't a very fashionable approach, but it did set some standards, I believe. But also it was interesting to discuss what is eligible, what costs are eligible as under gender research. You know, if you have some women sitting in a survey. Is that gender research really? And finally, of course, the discussion of where does the budget come from when we do gender research, particularly the integrated one. And uh, in terms of gender team alignment, at the beginning, the gender scientists were aligned or assigned to value chains. So when I joined ILRI, I was working in the livestock CRP, I was working in the Tanzania value chain. And finally, very important here, um, the gender analysis or the role of gender analysis, I think was very much understood as a means to improving livestock research. Uh, Peter, can you please move on to the next slide? So then in phase two, we actually did, I think, move one step further. In terms of research, we did not do any more like only ad hoc and basic you know, diagnostic research. We developed some very strategic overall questions, such as, for example, the correlation between women's empowerment and livestock. Or in terms of integrated research, we developed frameworks that really spell out what are the key gender considerations in the other flagships. For example, what are the key gender considerations in animal health? or in one health or in breeding. And then we have also looked into, you know, what the relationship between gender transformative and gender accommodative approaches. So we've really expanded our thinking. We have engaged with the importance of transformative approaches in livestock. We started engaging with the concept of intersectionality with new dimensions of environment. We worked on tool, we developed a new Women's Empowerment in Livestock Index and also Women's Empowerment in Livestock Business Index, the WellBe, and also started developing and implementing gender transformative approaches. So as you see, the focus here was not so much anymore women, but more like gender relations and women's empowerment, strong focus on women in business, not just women at production level, plus strategic work and integrated work hand in hand. At the programmatic level, 
We continue doing the capacity building, as I said before, but also we engage the most strategic capacity building. For example, we have been developing the capacity of our uh, consultants doing you know, business incubation for them to develop a gender responsive uh, business incubation that really addresses the systemic inequalities that women agripreneurs may face. In terms of budgeting, I think it's quite clear now that to integrate gender in a project, you need to have the time of a gender scientist and also some budget for gender activities. And it's quite also clear that, you know, if you do strategic work, the budget comes from LAFS. If we do integrated work, the budget comes from the other flagships. The gender team is not aligned anymore to value chains as it used to be. It's aligned to LAFS, where gender is home, then to the other flagships and often reports to both. And finally, very important again, I think the role of gender analysis has changed. Now we understand gender analysis to be a research field in its own right. We really see that uh, you know, we're not just looking at gender as a means to improve livestock development, but we also argue and have support that livestock development is a means towards gender equality. And you know, we also, there is an agreement by now that we also need to progress on our strategic analysis to better get the grasp of gender issues in livestock, because this will also help us with the integrated work. Uh, Peter, can we go to the next slide, please? So I think overall it's a beautiful evolution <laughs> from you know, focusing on women to focusing more on gender di dynamics and norms. And I think what we have created is a solid basis to build on. We have these you know, important benchmarks and diagnostic evidence that we can really build on. We have really made progress in terms of conceptual and innovative growth. You know, all the thinking we've done around empowerment, gender dynamics and norms, intersectionality, gender transformative approaches. I think we've been better able to position gender analysis strategically you know, in livestock research with these key bodies of knowledge, for example, on women's empowerment and livestock. We've also been able to create our own agenda. We're not just doing ad hoc anymore, but we have our own agenda that includes strategic work and integrated work. So in a way, you know, we really know where we want to go. And then uh, we've had an incremental buy, in you know, strategic plus integrated are both accepted. Uh, gender science, it's, it's a science in its own right, as I said already. And also, as you know now, gender equality is an impact area in the one CGIR. Very importantly, we also, I think, have made progress because we have projects and funded with gender as the entry point. We have a project in Ghana that is about um, animal vaccine systems and the entry point is gender. And we also have a larger team. Now this year maybe it was very special, but we have 15 people, including consultants that are working with us. We have increased our visibility within ILRI, beyond ILRI and the CG. You can look at the number of citations, mentions, requests for collaborations. And finally, some of the tools we have adopted have been adopted at ILRI, within ILRI, and with outside of the CGIR even, such as the WELI. So the last slide in terms of um, what next? Uh, well, what next? I think starting from the golden egg to the bale cheek onto the chicken, I think there is a lot of work to do, very exciting work, given the basis that we have created. I think we need to look and create more evidence on how livestock development can support gender equality. We have to engage with more with intersectional analysis, which is very important uh, for gender analysis and the whole issue about youth and so on. I think we need to really get projects or even a program on comparing transformative approaches and accommodative approaches. We can't do diagnostic work only anymore. We really need evidence on what works on the ground to support women's empowerment and progress on gender equality through livestock. And finally, you know, the work on empowerment is very, has a lot of potential and there is a lot to do there. We have a lot of large data sets coming up through the different implementations of the WELI. We need to analyze that data. We need to indeed continue to improve the WELI and the WELBI. We want them to become participatory. We have many ideas there. And finally, we are also at the programmatic level. We are also discussing, for example, having a dedicated team for empowerment, well and well-being. And that was it. I look forward to your feedback. Thank, Thank you. you very much, uh, Alessandra. So it's clear that the, there seems to be a genetic element to all these to, to these presentations. So we, it's not just an egg, but it's the chicken and the, the day-old chicken, the whole chicken. So I'm going to move on. We, we're a little bit behind time. 
so that's the, the I hope you understood the essence of the egg, um, though it's not really, it's much more than an egg. I'd like you to do the same thing, please. If you can post in the chat, and I'm seeing I actually there were already some questions and comments arriving in the chat. So if you could please go, oops, I need to go back. Where and how could you see this approach being widely applied? Applied. Which elements of this do you think are the most exciting, the most applicable? Where and how could they be applied? And there's already comments coming in. Um, if you could just type in the chat uh, and to put in your comments in the chat, that would be most perfect. Just like before, and Alessandra, if you see any of specific questions that are coming in, maybe you can reply to them in the chat, perhaps, or in the plenary. I'm hoping that some people will be replying in the chat now to the message that Jack Sahai just posted. Um, where and how do you see this gender approach, and maybe it's gender approaches, being most widely applied? If you could then type in the chat again, give us your feedback, give us your comments. We don't just want to have a one-way presentation of content. So I'm going to give you another 20 seconds or so. Aichi, thank you very much. That's good. Fall in there. Very good. Yep. Youth. Okay. Yes. Raising some interesting issues there. If you could type a few more comments, I'm going to wait, give you another few more minutes. Not a few more minutes, a few more seconds. <clears throat> There's some comments coming in. So, Alessandra, as people are typing, is there anything that you've noticed in the chat or in the, in the earlier messages you want to briefly reply to? That would be great. There was a question on the, the business component. Indeed, Pacham, um, thanks for the question. We are doing work specifically focused on uh, women as agripreneurs, and this refers also to the business incubation. And what is new there is that we are not just, you know, trying to support them, women to get into livestock business. We are trying to create an enabling environment for them to actually successfully perform in that business. And they are, these are doing through transformative approaches. There is a question about youth and other marginalized groups. Indeed, uh, this comes for me under the issue of intersectionality. So you see how different people have different, uh, uh, you know, I, uh, social markers that affect how they are advantaged or disadvantaged. At the same time, already trying to support young women specifically, we are focusing on in agripreneurs needs a very, very specific focus. So in a way, we will not be able to just address any marginalized group. So we need to be focused and strategic to be able to actually make progress. But thanks for the questions.